Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have a different style of keyboard for you. This one is from Kumu, that's how it's pronounced. And it's a Bluetooth foldable keyboard with a touchpad. Now, foldable keyboards have been around since like the era of the Palm Pilots that, you know, kind of came out and you did all sorts of work with those. And then they've kind of ebbed and flowed because of their compact nature. So this one was sent to me uh, for testing and review by Kumu. This is a review of my opinion of the device. And of course, my opinions do remain my own. I am not being financially compensated for the production of this video uh, beyond obviously receiving this sample. It does have a few features that are kind of unique for it. It does have that touchpad. You can pair up to three Bluetooth devices using Bluetooth 5.1 and it supports apparently iOS, Windows, and Android. So it should be compatible with pretty much everything that you want to use it with. It does support USB Type-C style charging and has a battery that's 140 milliamps, which should last you approximately three months. If we quickly unbox it, we have the keyboard itself. We have a short instruction manual and then we have a USB type A to USB type C cable in there for charging. We're just gonna move all this off to the side pretty quick. On the inside here, we have instructions in both English and in Chinese on how to use gesture control for iOS, Windows 10, and of course, Android pairing. So if you're not too sure how all that works, you can go ahead and read that here. And it also gives you a series of shortcuts that uh, do various functions depending on the operating system or the device that this has been paired to. Now the keyboard itself, when it's all folded up, is about 19.83 millimeters. Uh, and then when it's folded flat, it's about 9.86 millimeters. The whole thing weighs about 218 grams. So when we fold this out, we can see it like so. We've got a touchpad area here that has two definitive uh, click sounds. And then of course this whole area works as a touchpad. Now, one of the things that they ultimately had to do, of course, was decide where to split uh, the keyboard. So it's split between the RT, FG, and CV keys, as well as splitting the space bar. The whole thing closes with uh, magnets and is plastic construction. Like this is not what I would necessarily refer to as premium but I'm also fully aware of the price point that this is being sold at, which on sale is around 39 uh, US dollars. So if you take the battery, Bluetooth, and the foldability into it, there is obviously some money left over for build. It just might not be the most amazing typing experience that you've ever had in your life. And that of course is the compromise for having a device like this fold up. So if you are traveling and in need of a keyboard for whatever reason, then this should fit the bill. What I am gonna be curious to know is uh, how device pairing goes, and more importantly, how does typing go? Because these keys are in a very interesting place, and I'm gonna be curious to see how that impacts accuracy. All right, so let's do a quick typing test here and see what results we get. All right, so I had three typos, 38 words per minute, which is exceptionally slow for me, and I already know why. So the keys are not the same size, uh, <laughs> which is really, really tough. 
So like for example, the D key here is not the same size as the E key. And the space here, I found myself multiple times actually hitting in between thinking that the G key uh, was going to be there. So there is a, I'm gonna call it a very significant compromise with where this hinge goes and the overall performance on how quickly you can type. You're gonna see the same thing with the V key here is much smaller. Same with the T key. And it's a, a pretty significant size difference. So the width of a standard key on this keyboard is about, is about a centimeter and a half. And then these other keys are, I would say, just under a centimeter. So there's about half a centimeter difference um, depending on the key that you're striking. And that is going to increase errors and, and mistyping. And it's weird because you have the majority of the keys over here that are relatively normally spaced, but your enter key is too small and your delete backspace key is microscopic in comparison. So if you need to use this to type, you could, but it's not a very quick experience. Normally, the very first time using a keyboard, I will get double <laughs> that number. With all that being said, I actually wanna to talk to you about the main purpose that I think that this uh, could be pushed into with the highest positive impact. The best use that I actually think that a keyboard like this would be used for is your smart TV. And that was one of the reasons why I primarily wanted to test it, uh, not in uh, ideal conditions against a full-fledged keyboard, but how it would function in terms of uh, being paired with a smart TV and just being used to navigate certain apps and searching rather than using the remote uh, to do each individual character or relying on the voice recognition technology, which sometimes can be very hit and miss. And that's where I think this really shines because if you fold this up and put it next to your TV remotes, it's easy to grab off the couch, open it up. It would be nice if there was some kind of locking mechanism, uh, even magnetic, uh, just to help it stay rigid when it was on your lap. Uh, because it might fold up like this a bit on you. And overall, I found that most applications, the keyboard performed as I expected it to. Uh, using the internet browser built into the TV worked perfectly fine with this and supported the mouse. I went into Netflix and was able to search for content. Ironically, perhaps for a YouTube channel, it was the YouTube app that really struggled understanding this keyboard. There would be certain things that you would not be able to type certain letters, like I could not type the letter E. And whenever I tried to use the backspace or delete key, it registered it as a G press. No idea why that is the case or why the YouTube app treated this keyboard differently. However, all the other applications that I tested it on worked fine. Here's my final conclusion. I think that you are buying this at a price point. I think that there is a bit of a reason that folding keyboards have kind of gone out of fashion. However, I think that the compact keyboard for the purposes of being used with a smart TV or other smart devices in your home might be a place where we could see uh, the potential resurgence of a folding keyboard. However, when it comes to um, a keyboard that I would take with me for travel, I don't necessarily see the appeal. I have laptops with excellent keyboards. I have wireless keyboards that are actually very thin um, that might not be as thin as this and might take up a bit more real estate but are going to give me a much more reliable uh, typing experience without the compromises of having some keys larger than others. If you do want to know more about this, I'll be leaving some links in the description down below. And if you did enjoy this little look, then I would encourage you to do all those YouTube things, which you're going to see down in this corner over here. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you're uh, commenting in the comment section down below. I'd be curious, would you use one of these things um, if it was given to you? Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.